Good afternoon. I'm Joe Rogers, President and CEO of the Texas Heart Institute, and I'm pleased to be joined today by Dr. Robert Lustig, an emeritus professor of pediatrics from the University of California, San Francisco, who's just given grand rounds on a very interesting topic, and that is this intersection of diet and health. And I think that you have provided some really provocative ideas throughout your career about the ways that we are having detrimental effects on the population's health because of the ways that foods are processed, the way that they're regulated. And I wonder if you might just expand on that a little bit for our audience. Absolutely. So the first thing you have to understand is we have a healthcare crisis. I don't have to explain that to you. I don't think I don't have to explain that to the audience. The question is why? Why have things just completely gone off the rails? And I'm just gonna tell you, one thing, you can't fix health care until you fix health. You can't fix health until you fix diet. And you can't fix diet until you know what the hell is wrong. And we've gotten it wrong for the last 50 years. We barked up the wrong tree. And it has taken 50 years to basically turn the whole ship around. The good news is people now understand that diet does matter that you can't outrun a bad diet. We also now understand that it's not the patient's fault, that the, it's the food in the store. And what we've learned is that there's this thing called real food, i.e. food that came out of the ground or animals that ate the food that came out of the ground. And then there's this other thing called processed food. And the question is, is processed food food? And what we've realized over the last, I would say, two to three years is, in fact, processed food is not food. Now, how can I say that? It's got calories, <laughs> so it must be food, right? Yeah. Well, you know what? Let's take something that has calories that's not food. Alcohol. There's no dietitian on the planet that thinks that alcohol is food, but it's got calories. Let's take another one. Trans fats. We used to think trans fats were food. We now know better. Trans fats are direct poisons. Okay, Nine calories per gram, but it's a poison. And they're leaving our diet. Well, the fact of the matter is the processing of food adds things that are dangerous. One of them, the one I've done most of my work on, is sugar. And takes things out that were good, like, for instance, fiber. And people think fiber, well, that's the stuff you throw in the garbage after you juice <laughs> the fruit. Turns out the fiber was nutrition, just not for you. It was for your bacteria in your intestine, and you have to keep them happy. So it's the processing that turns food from benefit, from medicine, to poison. And, you know, we're just awash in ultra-processed food, and the government subsidizes it. So I, I, I'm in agreement with you. I think it's so exciting and helpful that you're bringing this out into the public domain. I think you're right. I think we've really begun to develop a deeper appreciation for the challenges that we're facing as a country, but even more broadly, globally, um, and the impacts of diet on particularly um, cardiovascular health, as, as it pertains to sure. the Texas Heart Institute. Absolutely. So here's the, the real challenge for us, uh, and I'd love to just get your perspective. It's mm -hmm. complicated. <laughs> it, it's such a complicated problem. That's one word for it. <laughs> such a complicated problem. How do we fix it? Ah, uh, well, we have to fix it at several levels, okay? And the problem is everyone thinks education is all that's necessary. Educate the public. You know what? Education hasn't solved any substance of abuse. No. Did Nancy Reagan's just say no work? We have an opioid crisis. Right? The problem is that there is something in our food that's addictive. And when you're addicted, it doesn't matter what you know. It doesn't matter that you can understand that that substance is affecting your health, your economy, your livelihood, your family, your society. You are powerless to do anything about it. That's the definition of addictive. And that addictive thing happens to have a name, and it's called sugar. 
And it's the reason that sugar's been added to virtually every processed food, because the food industry knows when they add it, you buy more. So the only way to be able to beat that is to actually not buy processed food, buy real food. But then you have the problem of, well, real food costs more. It doesn't have to. But it does because right now we subsidize all the things that are processed, corn, wheat, soy, sugar. So now we need government to help us. So that's why this becomes a bottom-up and a top-down phenomenon. We need both. But the problem is right now, we're just, you know, talking to each other rather than, you know, to the powers that be who, to get this done. Who does the work? Well, who, who, who's going to actually drive the change that you've just talked about? I think the doctors are. I think the doctors are, but we've got to get all the doctors on board. The doctors know that something's wrong. They don't know what it is and they don't know how to fix it, but they know something's wrong. They've been told their entire medical career, there's a pill for this. Well, you know what? We can fix acute disease. Medicine is great for fixing acute disease. And I am, you know, uh, absolutely on board with medicine and acute disease. But we haven't fixed any chronic disease. All we do is palliate. All we do is, you know, kick the can down the road. All we do is treat symptoms rather than actual disease. It's like giving an aspirin to a patient with a brain tumor. Might help the you know, headache, ain't gonna fix the tumor, okay? So that's what we've been doing with statins, that's what we've been doing with you know, PCSK9 inhibitors, that's what we're doing with antihypertensives. Yep. The disease is still there because the disease is diet related and we haven't fixed that. So I think the doctors need the wake up call and that's why I'm so glad to be here talking with you and talking at Grand Rounds today. I think this is great because you're challenging the healthcare community to think differently about our role in health. Exactly. What you're gonna challenge us to do is be health advocates and to become much more focused on public health. Uh, but I think until we begin to take that role based on our knowledge uh, and our interactions with patients, and as you said, what we see in the office and in the hospital every day, until we begin to take that to our government officials and begin to influence policy, I don't think we're gonna bend the curve. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very worried about that. The prob problem is, right now, healthcare is not healthcare. Healthcare is sick care, okay? And we can't unsick chronic disease but we can prevent it through healthcare if we knew what to do. Well, we actually do know what to do, and that's what today is about. Dr. Lustig, thank you so much for coming and spending the day at Texas Heart Institute. We've benefited greatly from your research, your passion for this field, and I hope that we all take up the challenge <laughs> to improve health. I'm with you, and thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. It's a pleasure, thanks. <laughs> Thank you.